So let's shift gears, Vortex generators. So this is a, one of these power curve upgrade technologies that are really simple, uh, but can make a pretty big difference as far as efficiency. This one company, SmartBlade, um, and there's a couple others that, that, that sell and install these, but they claim a 2.1% average annual energy production uh, increase over 100 test turbines. So mm -hmm. what does this technology do? It seems very simple, like little stick on, you know, epoxy in place kind of uh, mm -hmm. um, mostly made of thermoplastic vortex generators. But what's the, what's the aerodynamic tech here? It, it essentially trips the air that's what it's trying to do it's if you think of it as being like a little shark fin there's actually usually two shark fins so they're mm -hmm. uh sort of pointing into the airflow or or crosswise to the airflow a little bit and what happens is the air it's like a fence think of it as a a, a fence that's kind of set of the airflow so the air actually should to tumble over that fence uh, if anybody ever see a snow fence out in the out in the wild in the Midwest, there's snow fences all the time. The snow fences for for similarly where you you're actually tripping the air a little bit, so you don't have big buildup of snow. Uh, the vortex generator takes the air that's coming across the front of the blade, trips it, makes it tumble and spiral, and keeps it against the blade surface. Otherwise, the if you didn't have the vortex generator there, the air would sort of separate off the surface of the the, the blade and create less power and turbulence is loss. So you wanna get the airflow back on the surface, particularly on, on the inner third of the blade near the hub, because that, that part of the blade doesn't generate much power. Most of the power is generated in the outer two thirds. So if you can get some additional power out of that inner third of the blade by controlling the airflow and forcing the air onto the surface, that increases your power production. And if it knocks it up by a couple of percentage points, like we were talking about, in aging blades how the the power production drops by roughly a half to one percent per year so if you can get a one to two percent increase by basically peeling and sticking on these little plastic uh, shark fin type devices or vortex generators vgs then it's a real simple mod to do mm -hmm. people are going to do it and I've, I've seen them more and more and more uh, 3m makes a I think 3 ms involved in, in some of these things where the, the they just basically peel off. It's just a peel and stick 3M double sticky tape to the blade. And it works uh, on the inner third of the blade. Peel and stick can work on the inner third of the blade because the blade speeds, if you think about it, the blade speeds at the tip are like 180 to 200 miles an hour. At the hub, they're on a fraction of that. So there's not a lot of... You can do a lot of different things down there to make things stick. So you don't need epoxies and complicated things down there. You can basically peel and stick these vortex generators on. But the key to all of it is controlling airflow. And they only do it to the top surface, right? Because the top surface, like when you think of a wing, the top of the wing is curved and the bottom of the wing is flat. Wind turbine blades are very similar to that. So as the airflow comes over the top of that wing surface, it's where it wants to separate. Once it gets about to the middle of the cord, it wants to lift off and just go tumbling off. Well, these vortex generators sort of force it back down and, and create the power that you otherwise couldn't get. So it's a relatively simple technology. It's used in all sorts of industries. If you watch Formula One race cars have them, aircraft use them a good bit. Uh, anything that's aerodynamic and moving at relatively high speeds will have vortex generators for controlling the airflow. So the, the thing for uh, wind turbines is that they've been using them more and more and more to get that power production back up. So as they lose uh, production over time, they can put some add-ons. This is, this is the serrated edges. This is the vortex generators. This is the winglets to bring the power back up again so they can maintain maximum power output uh, for longer of the blade in wind turbine lifetime. So it's cool. It's cool. So let's talk about the, the root of the, uh, of the blade. So why is that so poor aerodynamically is it just because it's more round and it's got to be a little more robust just to you know yeah an it's anchor it in a there. load right it's, it's carrying a load and and the air speeds aren't high enough so if you think about it um you use the outer the blades gotten longer 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 it's the same reason so as as the blades get longer and longer and longer, even though the towers haven't really changed in terms of the height, you have more interface with air, which means that at lower wind speeds, you can reach production power levels. So over time, over the last 
10 ish, 15 ish years. So, what's happened is the towers haven't gone any higher. Essentially, the blade diameters have gotten bigger to intercept more air and therefore produce more power. Uh, so, you, it just the way that the physics are, um, the inner hub of the blade isn't moving across the air nearly as fast. It's more of a drag thing because the most of your power is out in the outer two thirds. So, as you make the blades longer, you generate more power at lower speeds, all plus, plus, plus. Uh, you just don't get that sort of at low speeds power generation on the inner third it just isn't moving that fast so um it's not intercepting as much air there's a lot of different, different dynamics and and you know one thing you had talked about earlier on, on another earlier podcast was you know as, as uh we start to think about not an individual turbine producing power we're starting to think of each uh, as a group of turbines as a system the same sort of thing right um the they're they're thinking about not necessarily putting the each wind turbine directly into the airflow because it may interfere with it, with the turbine behind it but it may want to tilt them slightly a couple mm -hmm. degrees left or right same sort of thing right so they're uh I, I was thinking about this over the weekend uh so i was watching a little bit of formula one which i can't really racing i, I can't really watch anymore because the person who starts at the pole wins all the time and not to say they're not great drivers they totally are great drivers but we got to a point in civilization where we have enough computing power to determine the aerodynamics of pretty much anything and it's aerodynamics that tends and somewhat power but aerodynamics and engine power that tends to win those races regardless so if you don't have the, the best aerodynamics in the world you lose those races regardless and so if you're not spending millions and millions of dollars in the wind tunnel to make the and that's why the formula one race cars look so weird because they've got you know this team of aerodynamicists full time that's all they do is work on the aerodynamics of the car and the spinning wheels and everything else that mm -hmm. same sort of technology being applied to wind turbines so you've, you've gone from if you look at wind turbine blade designs 10 15 years ago they're much they look rudimentary compared to what they have today and you see all these other little things being applied to these older blades to bring them back up because now we have the computational power to predict where we can make improvements to the blades and, and the new more modern blades have all the little accoutrements coming with them mm -hmm. like the serrated edges right they're coming out, out of the factory because they add that much uh, lifetime and power generation to the wind turbine blades so we've sort of reached this plateau and it makes racing awful to watch because in nascar is the same way in the united states it's the same th same thing where aerodynamics is play system and apart it and they have to control every single part of the car because if a little bit of aerodynamic improvement makes you the winner of race after race after race uh, the same thing is happening that sort of computational power is being applied to other areas aircraft fighter aircraft military aircraft definitely so aerodynamics there are crazy computationally and same things happening in in the wind term industry where we have the computational power you can be at your desk and do really complicated computational aerodynamics that you couldn't do 15 20 years ago and it's changing the way we do everything in terms of wind turbines uh, because I, I, we mentioned was it a podcast or two ago about ge hooking up with a uh, supercomputer right mm -hmm. you can can imagine now that we've gone from uh, basically copying aerodynamic wing designs off of airplanes to now designing our own wing wings essentially turbine blades based on the aerodynamics in the particular location where this blade may be installed so different parts of the world may have different shape blades because of the aerodynamics and the types of winds and the the, the, the peaks and the and the lows the valleys of the wind and whether you're in an ocean condition or somewhere else may change the way they want to change the aerodynamics to maximize it for your particular application very similar to the way formula one racers are, are are maxed out for the environment in which they're racing in so it's a different mindset now than it was several a couple of years ago two three years ago even totally different because the computational power is so available and the software is so good that we can do things we couldn't have envisioned of a couple of years ago it's it's an amazing evolution of computational technology it really really is well and when you think about one percent you know most people in our everyday lives you think like oh one percent of like my heating bill going down it's not a big deal no. but one one percent on one of these 12 megawatt turbines it's a a real, a really a lot, especially over a 20, a 20 year span. You know, it's yeah. huge. Yeah, and it's the same thing for Formula One race cars. For, so for Formula One race cars, having a one mile an hour difference, right? Because those cars are going 200 miles an hour. So a half a percent is one mile an hour. 
One mile an hour difference will win you those races time after time after time, uh, if, if the race has any length at all. Mm -hmm. uh, the same thing as this on a wind turbine. Because we're talking about such high levels of performance, that little incremental gain over time makes such huge differences. And this is where the marketplace comes in, where if you can show that your blade is going to be generate more power over a longer period of time, you're going to win in the marketplace.